Hello everybody. Thanks for watching our new video. We are at the Piano Solutions Workshop. I'd like to present you um, not a new but uh, a rare device that I did uh, when I work with the harpsichords. Actually this device just for creating uh, the loop for the harpsichord wire. Actually it's not a piano loop, it's a, a, a braid. You just make it uh, the cross wire. Uh, but why? You can make it a regular piano loop. Unfortunately, you'll not be able to do it on a harpsichord wire because it's very thin. Like I want to refresh your memory uh, uh, for the piano wire. Uh, you see, I use the shears just to cut it. You see, I cut it easy, different diameters that we apply on the piano. But on a harpsichord, that's a 0 0.32 millimeter look. It just bend it. You see, I cannot cut it. What it means? It means I have to make a different uh, loop in order to stay on the hitch pin. Uh, let's refresh our memories. How we're gonna do it on a, for the piano? Yeah, I want to show you how we're gonna make a single loop on a, a piano wire. Yeah, I think you remember already, I show you this device and just uh, want you to see what kind of a loop we use it on the single strings. Yeah, that's how we do it. As you see, it's uh, like, like this, it's just uh, and that's it, you see, that's a very simple, it means I just have to cut excess like this. And we place them, all, all the strings I did already here. You see, on this small uh, jig that helped you to uh, apply the strings. You see, I just put it on the pin. It just make you work comfortable like this. You can, uh, you can see all of them very uniform. And of course, later on, when you give the tension, you can just uh, adjust them. Uh, just pounding. Anyway, that's the piano wire, but it doesn't work on the harpsichord wire. And let's go back to the device. I want to explain you how it works uh, on the harpsichord and how you can make it just one person. Yeah, we refresh already our memory how to make the single loop on the piano wire. Uh, unfortunately, the same loop, we're not able to do it on the harpsichord. You can try it, but you see it's not going to stay on the hitch pin. That's why we have to make that cross, uh, just bending. And uh, in order to do this with the small wires, you need a tool. In the process of creating this loop, you use two hands of you, and uh, you have to, to start the rotation. That's why you, uh, you create another level. It means three, uh, actually, points has to be busy. And you see, uh, to start the uh, rotation, I create this double level that uh, operate my uh, Makita drill, you see. I can move it aside and it start to rotate like this. I use Makita because it's got a low speed and it's stop instantly. It's very important uh, in order to create this loop. How to operate it? I operate it with my knee, like this. I just like uh, sitting in the front of the device and I can start it. Then my hands is just uh, available to hold the wire. Yeah, we're dealing with a very fine wire, like this. And you see, it's just like uh, using your hands, uh, they just sometimes a little greasy or just a little bit just uh, sweat. That's why you got not enough uh, friction to, uh, to hold the wire. Uh, in order to uh, just rid of this problem, you uh, just, I suggest you to use the uh, just gloves that got some uh, vinyl uh, coat that create a very nice friction. And you see, the wire is really, really fine. It's, I think it's zero. Uh, 0.27 millimeters. You can hardly see it. And uh, of course, I use my gloves and I use my glasses. 
uh, you see the way how I built it. Yeah, I, I got the certain uh, nozzle, you see, with the pin. The pin is uh, has the diameter of the uh, hitch pin on the harpsichord. And you just go through this rod. And the wire, I put it behind, like this, you see. And yeah, I have to be sure that I hold it nicely, like that. And, okay, to be sure that I got it. Okay, once I put it on a, a sharp angle, I can just make the first, the first cross thing. And then I continue. And then I just ha I have to make the final lock, like this. Like that, and just cut this act a wire that goes on the side, release this wire, and let me just cut it like that, right? Like that. Yeah, we create is very uh, just complicated. Yeah, just like this cross loop. And uh, you see, it goes cross, and on the end, it's just like very tight uh, wire. And uh, just let's see. Uh, that's a manufacturer loop, and that's our loop, uh, like that. Uh, you see, uh, the manufacturer make a little bit tighter here. That is no problem for me to do this. I can I can just uh, even uh, make it on this one, but it's still going to be okay. Uh, in order to uh, create the uh, consistent uh, loop, you have to just practice a little bit and then create uh, the certain amount of rotations, uh, and uh, that will be okay. Uh, in order to make uh, even uh, this one tighter. You can do. You can just do it like this. You can just put it back if if you'd like to do it. It means you you have to practice it and just hold hold this one, hold it like this. Let's say uh, you probably need the pliers. Let me let me take the pliers, or I can probably hold it like this and just continue a little bit, and you just create. Like that. Of course, it's extra, extra work for you. But you see, it's create a little bit tight. You see, it's tighter. You can continue it and create it more tight. But uh, this is enough because some uh, manufacturers make it like this. Yeah, it's a very complicated uh, if you don't have the tool like this. It's almost impossible to do it. Uh, with uh, practicing on this tool, you can really achieve a good results. You can make it uh, good. It probably has, to, uh, you have to experiment on the different angles. Like let's say if you increase the uh, angle, uh, you get like more tight coils. And of course, it's all experimental because you're dealing with the different diameters. Uh, with a uh, different uh, uh, wires, sometimes you use this uh, the copper wire. You see, and uh, actually another problem that uh, why you need the tool. You see, that's a manufacturer. You see how the many oh, yeah. Let's see it's here on this. One. The manufacturer did it. You see, uh, they just like made a little bit uh, mistake mistaken here. You see, one wire goes around. That's why this uh, string might not hold. Uh, yeah, that's why, uh, of course, if you uh, keep it in your hands and make yourself the wire, um, that's, of course, you control it. Uh, I just suggest you at least to get a knowledge because we know that uh, it's not so many harpsichords. They still exist. And you might not even uh, just have the occasion to install the strings. But for the people who are dealing with the harpsichord, it's very important to have one. At least uh, maybe 
close or something. Otherwise, you have to wait till somebody make it for you. But uh, my uh, thing is that it's always good uh, to have the tool that you can just like be in control of the restoration. And it doesn't matter if it's a, a piano, a upright piano, or grand piano, concert grand, or small baby grand, harpsichord, or some even other instrument like guitar or whatever you have, because you have to be a professional person to deal with anything. And the more knowledge you get, the better for you. And of course, it's investment in all our League of the Piano Solutions. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Thank you.